Hello and welcome everyone. We're really excited to have you here today for our weekly OCI deep dive. For those of you that might be new to these presentations, we're hosted on Cloud Customer Connect, which is our Oracle community forum for end users. And I'll be dropping some links in the chat throughout, uh, sharing some resources. And if you haven't joined that forum, we highly encourage you to do so. Create a free account, join in discussions, post questions, and look for upcoming events on all kinds of topics. My name is Kenna Ketrick. I am a program manager with the OCI go-to-market team. And today we're joined by Gopi Gopalakrishnan, senior principal product manager for a technical deep dive into the newly released web application firewall enhancements. And uh, I think that's quite enough for me. So go ahead, Gopi, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Kenna. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session. My name is Gopi Gopalakrishnan. I'm the product manager for OCI's web application firewall and flexible load balancing products. As Kenna mentioned for our session today, we'll talk about the OCI WAF features, including the recent announcement of enforcing WAF protection on our flexible load balancers. All right, let's start with the problem surface before I dive into the OCI WAF product and solution. So as we all know, web applications and APIs are increasingly becoming the lifeline of today's digital transformation and digital businesses. Again, businesses use these for revenue generation, sharing of information and brand promotion. And all of these activities can be severely impacted if the business web application or API becomes unavailable or is exploited due to code weaknesses, gets infected by malware, and much worse, loses the private information. Again, factors such as rise of cloud computing, the widespread use of open source technologies these days, and the increase in data processing requirements add on top of that the complexity of web applications and an increase in the overall sophistication of attackers has led to an extremely challenging environment for IT security leaders and customers like ourselves. And on top of that, the fundamental challenge with security today isn't about having the right number of security tools. If you ask anyone, how much time do you have and want to spend integrating security tools, the obvious answer is zero. At OCI, our goal is to help remove infrastructure and tool complexity and lower your costs at the same time. We offer an integrated set of security tools that are included and are inherently part of our infrastructure platform and at most, most times at no additional cost, which delivers the value, which is hard to match in the marketplace today. And obviously the number of challenges in security is growing and the surface area we need to protect gets bigger every day. There is a lot of complexity involved in securing your users, your devices, apps and infrastructure. So let's talk about what drives our security product. What are the core principles? When we think about how to make security easier for our customers, we focus on five specific things. The top of our list is ease of use and simplicity. Ease of use is prioritized very highly for us. We know that we have to make people's lives consistently easier and ease of use is something that's hard to add in after you develop your solutions. And we also focus and provide customers with a transparent, always on security posture with integrated controls. And we believe that security should not be a construction project. Thirdly, we, we believe in providing prescriptive solutions and providing preventative guardrails that help reduce the chance of human error. We know that everybody makes mistakes. So safety net is almost always a good thing. And automation is another key theme that cuts across all of Oracle and OCI. And it's certainly true in the domain of security as well. We want to automate and help you automate as many routine tasks for our customers and enable you to spend time on higher level business issues. Last but not least, unified tools and controls is one of our topmost priority as well. And that obviously makes things easier when you're working across multiple products and multiple solutions where you don't have like context switch between multiple panels. All right, with that, let's dive into uh, the product. So OCI Web Application Firewall is a cloud-based security service that helps secure your web applications and API endpoints from malicious traffic. At the OCI WAF layer, we use a multi-layered approach to protect web resources from a host of cyber threats, including malicious bots, layer 7 DDoS attacks, and the general uh, top 10 OAS threats, such as cross-site scripting, SQL injections, and other vulnerabilities. 
we'll talk about the uh, features in the next few slides here, but in terms of the customer benefits, we enable our customers to deploy a defense and depth strategy by helping enforce VAC protection, both at their edge, closest to where the user traffic is coming in, as well as in region on their load balancers, which is that latest announcement we just talked about. That way, the uh, traffic path and the flow is protected end to end. And with this recent launch of WAF enforcement on our load balancer, OCI WAF can now also protect internal applications and not just the internet facing or public application. In effect, we put protect both against external as well as inside threats. And across both these enforcement options, we, we uh, support a similar set of features. And in terms of features, WAF has four major categories of will. The first one is access control, which allows our customers to restrict access to their application or the API endpoint based on layer three to layer seven parameters. Conditions such as source IP address, URL parameter, HTTP headers, and so on. And our second category is the protection rules, which helps you secure against the top 10 OAS threats that we talked about and other uh, CVEs and zero day attack signatures. And again, we'll talk about each of these uh, feature categories in detail in the next few slides. But at a high level, uh, the, the goal of the next feature bot management is to help classify good versus bad, bad bot traffic and also help restrict bad bot traffic from reaching or exploiting your web application. Last but not the least, our rate limit rules helps prevent and protect against layer seven DDoS attacks. All right, let's talk about our first category of features, which is the access control rules. As I mentioned, you can use the user access controls or the access control rules to restrict or control access to your backend web application or API. As an example, you can use regional-based access control. Uh, that's a perfect choice to keep your clients to access applications that are in a specific region. You may want to, maybe you have a business that's only operating in certain countries and you can completely block access from other countries. You can also activate the user access control based on layers of information like HTTP headers or based on a new URL address. The second category we're gonna talk about is protection rules. So the main goal of protection rules is to help provide threat signatures that operates well within the uh, OAP top 10 rule sets as well as other industry leading uh, uh, threat feeds that OCIWAF gets the signatures from. So you can use these rules to protect your critical web applications against malicious layers and attacks from bad actors. The way these rules work, they compare the incoming request to determine if the request contains an attack payload. Again, as compared to our threat, uh, industry leading threat feeds, if we determine that the request is indeed an attack, you have the option to either block the request or you can enable logging or turn on alerts for that specific request. And the types of attack that we uh, detect against are varied. Like we do the basic SQL injection, cross-site scripting, HTML injection, and many more. And this also includes CVEs and other uh, zero-day threat vectors. We have uh, recently launched an out-of-box threat signature for the log4j protection as well. All right, so rate limiting, like we talked about earlier, uh, we see customers using it to stop layer seven DDoS. And it's often employed to stop bad bots from negative, negatively impacting your web application or, uh, or your API endpoint. And that's rate limiting is one of the other tools that our own SOC team uses to help with the DDoS mitigation in general for any layer seven DDoS attack. And you can, uh, reinforce rate limiting based on, again, layer three, layer seven parameters. You can use conditions such as the source IP address or layer seven conditions like your URL path, request headers, and so on. All right, in terms of uh, bot management, this is a feature that's currently available with our edge enforcement uh, web application firewall. It's something that's we are, that we are tracking on our roadmap for the load balancer enforcement. But again, the goal of uh, the bot management is to help whitelist known good bot traffic where it's required 
At the same time, you can also rate limit or prevent bad bot traffic from entering your web application or API using techniques such as you know, uh, capture challenges, uh, device fingerprinting, JavaScript challenges, and so on. All right. So one question we uh, get asked by customers is that now that we have multiple enforcement options on web, what is the recommended enforcement option? And what, what is the best practice in terms of enforcement? Again, the standard answer for that is it depends on the customer use case and requirements. Uh, but what we have done here is like taking a stab at you know, some of the common use cases we have heard so far and providing a recommendation based on that. I know the picture on the right is a little bit of an eye chart, uh, but the picture is trying to depict uh, an example customer here who is an e-com retailer. And this specific uh, e-commerce retailer has more of a multi-cloud strategy. They have their workloads hosted both with an OCI and some third-party providers. In this specific example, they have their CRM servers running on a third-party provider, and they have the application workloads running with an OCI. So in this case, uh, this customer falls into the third category of use case we're talking about, where our recommendation would be to enforce WAF protection both at the edge using your edge enforcement option, as well as the new in-region enforcement option, both for their public as well as private load balancers. The public load balancer, which is serving your north-south or internet facing traffic, again, to protect from external threats, whereas enforcing it on the private load balancer helps protect the uh, resources from insider threats and other internal attacks from the east-west traffic. However, if you, if you have applications that are primarily hosted within OCI and specifically within one or two OCI regions, our recommendation would be to enforce WAF protection on the flexible load balancer itself that's front-ending your application. Likewise, if you have applications that are primarily hosted outside of OCI, or you have more of a global spread of applications with OCI and other providers, uh, our recommendation would be to use the WAF edge enforcement. All right, let's talk about some of the key differentiators of our OCI WAF platform as compared to some of our cloud competitors. So one of the major differentiators for OCI WAF is the ability to directly enforce protection on a web application at the edge, directly on a web application's FTDN or the CD. So what that enables you is that it provides you the flexibility to secure applications that are not fronted by an OCI load balancer instance as well as obviously enforce it at the edge. And our goal and, and uh, the, uh, what we go by in terms of the enforcement principle is that OCI WAF enables you to protect your application infrastructure and workloads across OCI, your on-premises and any other clouds. And one of the major differentiator uh, that recently got launched along with the new en enhancement of WAF enforcement load balancer is the new WAF for SaaS program. It's currently in limited availability. And what the program offers is the inherent WAF protection on Oracle services. And the limited availability has been kickstarted with our own uh, Fusion Apps platform. So OCI WAF is enabled at the Fusion Apps SaaS platform level as a security uh, defense in the strategy. And this program will be expanded to other SaaS platforms and services soon. And we'll talk about that in the roadmap section. Last but not least, we have also introduced and simplified our pricing model for OCI WAF for both the edge and the new enforcement. So let's talk about pricing. So going forward, WAF pricing will be comprised of just two components, WAF instance and request. And the WAF instance charge here is based on the number of WAF enforcements or policies that's either attached to your edge uh, web application C, uh, FTDN or the uh, load balancer. And the request charge covers the actual amount of traffic or the volume of traffic processed by that specific WAF instance. And again, as you can see here, the rates are really competitive. And on top of that, we have introduced a free tier within the pricing where customers are not charged for their first WAF instance and also usage up to 10 million requests per, per month. And one additional thing to note, compared to our previous uh, pricing model, there is no 
premium or uh, upcharge for bot traffic. Bot traffic requests are processed at the same cost as a regular request. So that's 60 cents per million requests. All right, with that, let's segue into a short demo here. In this demo, we have an example of a customer known as MuShop. This customer has an e-commerce website for pet products built as a set of microservices on OCI. MuShop's web application servers are fronted by an OCI flexible load balancer. Today, we will show how to create an OCI WAF policy and enforce it on the MuShop flexible load balancer to protect it from common web vulnerabilities like the OASP top 10 and other layer 7 attacks. Walk through the steps of creating an OCI WAF policy to protect our MuShop application and enforce it on the MuShop flexible load balancer. We are in the create WAF policy screen and we have given our WAF policy a friendly name. We will leave the compartment selection as is. MuShop has two specific WAF use cases that we will cover today. Our first use case is around access control. Since MuShop only operates in the US, we would like to restrict user traffic coming in from any other geolocation. We can do that using the geolocation condition. Any user traffic that meets this condition triggers a rule action. In our case, let's set up the rule action to send a HTTP 401 code back to the user if their traffic is coming in from a non-US geolocation. OCI WAF also helps protect against DDoS attacks with a rate limiting feature. Customers can create rate limit rules based on conditions such as URL path, source IP, host header, etc. We will skip that step for this demo. And now for our final use case, let's configure WAF protection rules to protect MuShop against top 10 OASP threats such as cross site scripting, SQL injection, etc. Let's filter based on the OASP tag. And now I am going to enable all of these OASP protection signatures. Now let's enforce this policy on our MuShop flexible load balancer. And as the final step, review and apply the policy configuration. First demo we will get into is the geolocation based access use case. In this browser tab, I have a website that shows my IP address and geolocation. We can see that I'm coming from New York and if I try to access MuShop application now, everything looks good. I'm able to access the website without any issues. Now let's try enabling a proxy and connect from a different geolocation, let's say Canada. Let's check our geolocation again. As you can see, I am connected through Canada. Now, if I try to access MuShop, we are met with our geo access condition where my access is restricted based on my non-US geolocation. Now for the second use case, we will show how MuShop is protected against OS threats like cross-site scripting, where a hacker can inject attacks through user submitted content. Now to simulate that, let's inject an attack script through the MuShop URL here. And as you can see, the script is blocked by our OS protection rule and we are being served a HTTP error page based on our WAF policy. The final thing we will look at today is the integration with OCI native logging and analytics dashboard. The logging analytics dashboard provides security admins the ability to create custom dashboards based on WAF logs. So here we have a dashboard that gives us a picture of what's happening with our website and firewall based on the aggregated WAF logs for the past eight hours. As you can see here, we have served up quite a few 401s and a lot of requests. We've also triggered 
quite a bit of our rules that we configure in the BAF policy. We can also check what type of access we got by country and who are the top IP addresses sending us traffic. So in summary, we saw how easy it was to set up WAF protection on our flexible load balancers and how enabling WAF protection strengthened the security posture of our application by protecting it from vulnerabilities like OASP top 10 and other layer seven attacks. All right, uh, let's pause here and maybe take some live questions before we dive into the roadmap. Sure, so the first question we have is, can we use the WAF in a uh, service-oriented architecture application? If yes, what, configure, what configuration should we use for the existing SOA CS environment? Sure, uh, so again, the enforcement option for the WAF SOA is, or the SOA application is very similar to what we offer today. If it's an Oracle SOA application that's fronted by a load balancer, you can enforce it at the load balancer layer, or the other option is to enforce directly on the application's URL using our edge enforcement policy. Alex or Marcos, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think you covered it. Uh, the next question we have is, can the WAF service be used to protect Oracle SaaS Fusion offerings such as HCM and ERP? Yep, all right, so the answer to that is yes. There are two options to protect that. So one is the, uh, the inner and Fusion Apps platform protection that we just talked about, which is currently in limited availability. But if you have workloads, uh, the customer workloads, and you want to like, enforce WAF protection on that, you can do that as well. And again, the options are the load balancer enforcement and the edge enforcement. Uh, the next question we have is, if we get a DDoS attack, will we be charged all the traffic or for the clean traffic or the dirty traffic? All right, so uh, from a DDoS attack perspective, so we, we have a separate uh, SKU and a service for DDoS mitigation. So the way it works is, if, if you believe you're under DDoS attack, you open a service request through that process and that gets transferred to our uh, support team and our SOC, the security operations center team. And if, when they determine that it's indeed a DDoS attack, they'll obviously first help mitigate that attack using tools that we have at our disposal. And you can request for credits back for all of the attack traffic. So essentially you should only be charged for clean traffic and uh, should be able to like, receive credits back for the dirty traffic. Uh, the next question is, WAF for SaaS controlled availability program. Can you please share more information or a link to get more details? Sure. Uh, so there, there will be more communication coming out from our SaaS teams uh, around that program, including the limited availability and the plans on general availability. Uh, but if you, if you want to like, connect with us offline, I can definitely put you in touch with the SAS uh, program team that's working on this. In terms of geolocation, can the WAF service detect users coming out from Tor? Sorry, Sorry I'm not familiar with Tor. Uh, Alex or Marco is deep. So you know the answer to that question is uh, we're currently integrating with the threat uh, Intel team and the threat Intel team does track Tor exit nodes. So what will happen is you have a ability to select the Tor proxies. And if you'd like to block them, you can either use a network list or you can use the threat Intel defined uh, list in order to block that. Perfect. Yep. And we'll talk about our threat integration plans when we talk about roadmap here in a few minutes. The next question is when you link the WAF to the load balancer, do you still have to do something to prevent an attacker to use the IP to bypass the WAF? like you need to do with a classic WAF setup? That's a great question. So in, in our case, the, uh, the the data plane for both the WAF and the load balancer uh, service actually are co-located and we enforce it directly on the IP. Uh, you don't necessarily have to enforce protection directly on the IP of load balancer, uh, but if you choose to do so, you can do that through our access rules, either at the WAF layer or the load balancer layer. Also, just to add to that a little bit, definitely you want to protect your backends. So in a situation where you, you know, where you're attempting to protect the origin and not let traffic go to the origin, 
then you should probably create some type of access control lists to not allow traffic to go directly to the origin to bypass your load balancer, which has your WAF enforcement on there. Yep, that's a good call out. Yep, and then Alex, yeah, uh, confirm this. So you can do that either through access control rules or it can also be done at the subnet with our NSGs and so on, correct? That's absolutely correct. Uh, the next question is sort of similar. How do you force all traffic to an application to go through the WAF? Yep. Do you want to take that out? Sure. So in this case, you can use things like DNS. And then similarly, by creating ACLs to not allow traffic to reach your back end, you, you point all the DNS traffic to the load balancer and then the traffic should flow through your load balancer, which has your WAF attached. And then by ACLing off your origin or your backend, you're not allowing any traffic to come from anywhere other than your load balancers, which would be your uh, sort of your enforcement for the traffic to go through the load balancer. Uh, the next question is for CDN capability in OCI, is our story still to use edge policy for that? All right, hold that question. We're going to answer that in the roadmap here, uh, but at a high level, the current capabilities for caching and so on, yes, you're, you're absolutely right. It's part of our edge enforcement policy, but OCI is working on a native CDN platform too, and we'll talk about our plans of integrating with that in the roadmap section. The next question is, how does one choose which service to use, WAF Edge versus WAF LB? And which one of the 250 rule sets to use? Sure. Uh, so we tried answering that in the uh, the use cases and recommendations slide, right? So if, if I were to like recap that, so if you have applications that are primarily hosted in one or two OCI regions and they are fronted by a load balancer, our recommendation would be to absolutely use the uh, new in-region enforcement on the load balancer. But if you have applications that are hosted, let's say in multiple clouds, or you have a hybrid with some applications on your on-prem and some in OCI, or you have more of a global posture where the application is like hosted across multiple OCI regions, our recommendation would be to use the edge enforcement policy. As well as uh, you can do a defense in depth by combining both the edge enforcement and the in-region policies where you're protected end-to-end. Uh, in terms of the 250 rule sets, all of our rule sets, if you look at our console, they're, they're tagged based on labels. So we classify them based on, let's say, like labels like OASP and specific injection type attacks or CVEs. Our recommendation would be to, you know, obviously uh, enable the basic OASP labeled uh, protection rules. But if you need help with like tuning and identifying which specific rules needs to be applied, uh, my recommendation would be like reach out to our security operations team. Our SOC team can definitely help, you know, uh, work with you and identify what are the appropriate rules for your specific application and use case. Alex, again, feel free to chime in. I don't add anything there. Yeah, that's absolutely right. The SOC, we do have documentation on uh, what we call like the WAF, the WAF tuning, which will help you kind of decide which rule sets to use and the you know if you have any questions definitely the SOC can help you also do a custom tuning based on your specific setup perfect uh, the next question is do you still need to directly allow the long list of oci waf edge servers into your subnets ingress rules all right so the answer to that is uh it depends on the enforcement type. If you are only using the load balancer enforcement, uh, you don't have to you know, whitelist these uh, subnets and ingress rules. However, if it's the edge enforcement, yes, you would have to uh, do that. We do have some plans on simplifying that for the edge enforcement policy, but as of now, if you're using the edge enforcement, yes, you would need to whitelist that specific subnet and the list of IP addresses that we share. Uh, is there any documentation guidance on how to enable ERP to use WAF? What about warehouse management system? I don't believe we have specific documentation, at least from the OCA WAF product uh, perspective or the product team. Uh, we don't specifically have recommendations for ERP. Uh, Alex, are you aware of any? 
I don't believe we have. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Right, but with that said, if you, if you need, you know, help with tuning the policy or applying it to specific ERP uh, use cases, we are here to help, and we can also engage uh, resources from our ERP team and other SaaS services. And the last one that I have here is, can you please expand or talk more on the device fingerprinting capability? What parameters are included in the fingerprints? Examples, operating system, web browser, et cetera. All right, Alex, do you want to take a stab at it? I, mean, I can chime in too. Sure, yeah. The device fingerprinting does go over some of the fingerprints that you mentioned. Uh, in the case of browsers, we try to fingerprint a specific browser based on things like screen size or installed libraries that should be expected with that browser, operating system details as well. And then we also try to fingerprint mobile devices as well. So if you're giving a user agent that says that you're an iPhone, but you have uh, indicators that you're an Android, for instance, then that would be something that we would flag as uh, not uh, representing the proper fingerprint for your device. Perfect. And then we do have plans on, you know, expanding this uh, analytics based on AI and ML that we'll talk about here in a, uh, in a couple of minutes with the roadmap section. All right. Are there any more questions? If not, let's switch gears and talk about our roadmap plans. All right. So we talked about what's available uh, right now as part of our product, which is the WAF enforcement at the edge and load balancers, both of which provide a consistent set of features in terms of our access rules, protection rules, bot management and rate limiting. And obviously the bot management part on the load balancer enforcement is something that we are working on for next calendar year. And we also have the WAF for SaaS program in a limited availability fashion with our Fusion app SaaS services. Our focus for next year, again, I've called out a few key initiatives here that we are tracking for next calendar year. Uh, by no means this is an exhaustive list, but again, some of the most high priority items that we are tracking as part of the roadmap. The top of which is integration with OCI's new Threat Intel service. So the Oracle or OCI Threat Intel service is something that's being in, uh, currently developed by our security team and uh, strike for general availability by early next calendar year. And the threat intel service provides practical threat intel data, including indicators of compromise, threat type associations, geolocation data, as well as known bad actors and confidence scores. And we source this from multiple first party Oracle data, as well as, well as third party data from providers like NetEquity, CrowdStrike, and other open source type threat feeds. Our goal from the OCA WAF platform perspective is to integrate and use the threat intel data and enable our customers to enforce security rules, both from an access control and protection rules using this data. And the second major initiative for us uh, in terms of the new WAF enforcement on load balancer is to get parity in terms of features that supported with our edge enforcement. So the biggest gap right now is the bot management. And we will be introducing support for bot management on the load balancer enforcement early next calendar year. Likewise, we're also introducing the WAF enforcement on a web application that's hosted within an OCI in region, like how we do with the edge enforcement today for uh, web applications that are hosted globally. And I know there was a question earlier on around CDN functionality. And uh, as, as you may all know, we do support some CDN-like features within the edge enforcement today with caching and compression and so on. But OCI is working on a native CDN platform. And our goal from the OCI WAF product team is to introduce WAF enforcement and integration on the CDN platform uh, and provide a seamless experience, just like what we did with the load balancer native integration. And last but not least, we are working closely with our SaaS partners and expanding the scope of WAP for SaaS platform to not just the Fusion apps, but all of Oracle uh, SaaS services, including NetSuite. In terms of future initiatives that the team is working on right now, uh, these don't necessarily have committed dates at the moment, 
Uh, but one of the major initiatives that we're working on is integrating WAF more tighter with the API gateway platform, just like what we did with the load balancer. You can enforce API protection on WAF today with the edge enforcement. However, that access two separate reverse proxy hops. We are working with the API Gateway platform team to have a tighter data path integration, just like the load balancer, and enable you to directly enforce WAF protection rules and access rules on an API Gateway. The last couple of initiatives here are more focused on uh, usability and enhancing our data based on AI and machine learning. So the first one is to simplify the user experience by providing you WAF templates and recommendation engine for the most common and popular web applications. And we are planning to start with the popular web application that Oracle provides as well as like popular services like you know, WebLogic, PeopleSoft and so on, but eventually expand it to uh, third-party applications as well. All right, uh, the last one here is around our uh, goal to improve the analytics and the data that we use today based on more AI and machine learning type uh, initiatives. Some of this, we do have current proof of concepts uh, available. So our goal is to introduce behavioral DOS to provide automatic protection against DDoS attacks by analyzing your traffic behavior using, using machine learning and obviously by monitoring the server health, the origin load, as well as like identifying anomalies, like performance slowdowns or traffic spikes to accurately detect and mitigate DOS type attacks. We're also investing heavily in user and entity-based behavioral analytics. And the goal here is to detect any anomalous behavior and deviations from normal patterns and help you enforce mitigation and uh, captured and audit that information if there's any deviation from normal patterns and enforce WAF protection when there is a deviation. All right. And as always, these are the current features that are on our table uh, and the dates and features here are subject to change. If you have any feature request that's not covered here, please reach out to us through your sales team or your support uh, contacts. And we are happy to discuss and add that to our future roadmap. That brings us to the end of the session. Thanks to everyone for taking the time today to attend. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us through your support channel, as well as your sales counterparts. And we are happy to help with any questions that we may have on the OCI WAF or the load balancing platform. Thank you.